All right, so welcome back to another lesson, another class, and uh, it's more of an action pose position on this one. Um, I've got some things in mind that I want to do, but it's going to start out slow and work our way in. And I'm looking at the monitor and this camera, and it like brightens up and darkens, and it's just hopefully it won't be too bright like it was on my last video a couple videos back. So okay, anyway. Draw this position. I'm gonna try to try to be quick about it. Try to try to be quick about it. So I'm getting the, the position down. This just the direction down. And I want to do another gesture of speed, gesture of drawing. So uh, beginners, you can start getting loose. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of stuff in mind, but it's just getting it getting it done is yeah, that's the hard part. So <clears throat> first thing you have to do is lock your torso in. If you lock your torso in and you get it just right, then there's many positions you can make from that. Is this really light? It is really light. <clears throat> I don't want to use a dark pencil. Okay, let me go a little darker then. Because I have a new overhead light and sometimes it's hard. If I turn it off, then it's too dark. If I turn it on, it's kind of too bright. So let's just see what we get from here. Okay, so I'll try to darker. Now, right off the bat, that's too long. I can see that. By me looking away, just for a second, I realize that's too long. And I think what it is, what makes it too long is your one, if this is if this is a little too long, too too overly round, especially this, if you put too much waste in them. Too much of the tuna can, then it gets a little too long. It makes for a longer, longer position. All right, I'm getting stiff now. So I'm gonna keep going. By keeping your pencil moving, you eliminate the greater possibility of getting stiff. It's just, it's just looking weird. This camera is just doing some craziness. Let me turn the light back on and see what, we, what we're working with. Let's see if I can switch lights, brightnesses. Give that a try. Yeah, that's, I can see that a little better. So with this, I don't know if I'm going to bring this up. And it's just kind of like off the top of my head, kind of a position. I know when I'm going this way with this back leg, going that way. It could be a leap or a jump or, or a whatever. So drawing through, so this is going to be about right like this. The knee is going to be here. The shin is going to be here and the calf is going to be right there. It's a good thing about having two color pencils or different color pencils. You can do that kind of thing. And if people, if you're having trouble drawing feet, draw a, a triangle, like a wedge like that. And then you can round it off later. Look at this light. One day I'm going to get a nice studio professionally lit. So there won't be no trouble remembering this is the inside of the foot. And it's really hard to draw a right foot and a left foot because they both, even professionals, I've seen anime where they're supposed to be the other other foot but it looks like the other foot if you know what I'm saying there's a difference between the right foot and the left foot but we all draw the same side foot it's just it's weird that way maybe I'll bring that leg out I don't know let's find out let's see let's see and this is something you else you can do Is it me or is you, is it that you just can't really see this thing? 
Let's brighten the light. Let's see. And that helps. It's like it picks up for me in the monitor anyway. It's like it picks up and then it takes away. Maybe if I put something dark in the way, in the in, in it, it'll pick that up. It's something like this. Wow, did that just happen? Did that just brighten up that thing? Crazy. Anyway, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I'm trying not to get this video. I have this little color. Maybe it needs color on top of it to help it stay. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so. I want to bring this shoulder down. So that it can be this right there. This is going to be down. This is going to be out. And this, this is going to be right here. I'm going to put that hand right here. So I'm going to put that head facing that hand. So that neck is wherever that uh, collarbone comes, the base of that neck is going to be right there. So I'm going to put my hand here. And it's good to put your hand, well, put your delt first. Always put your delt first. Because that, that's realistically part of your torso. And then the rest could just match up, however. One thing that I was looking at in the mirror so that I can explain it to you guys a little better is let me get a piece of paper. Just one piece of paper, Brian, that if you lift your arm up, draw this dark side, you, you, you'll be able to see it. If someone, because a lot of times you, when you do comics, you're going, to, you're going to have somebody's arms raised, have the arms raised. So if you raise your arm, nobody raises their arm up straight like that. It's got to come out. So you have your elbow, whenever you, you raise your arm up, your elbow is going to go up like this. So this is going to be your elbow right here. And it's going to follow this, this, this plane, this line right here. So basically, and it's only going to go like maybe like chest height because your, your arm is not going to go like up here. You know, it's not going to, that's, that's not going to happen. So unless you're drawing the alien. So that's just something to remember when you draw. Is that your elbow is going to be kind of like pointed out and down almost. So if I'm raising my hand, even if I have my hand, that's just like, like I'm going to do. The hand is going to be like here. Here's going to be the guy's hand. So your elbow is always going to be like out here. It's going to be on that line. It's not going to be above the chest. It's going to be I, maybe straight out. Maybe that's as high as it's going to go. So that arm is basically going to go back. And this other arm is going to come up. So it's going to be kind of like this in an exaggerated way. You know, unless you straighten the arm straight out. Other than that, your elbow is always going to be out here, pointed down here. So that just, <clears throat> it just makes it easier when you're drawing your cylinder for your arm, knowing that elbow is going to be here. Now, even if I straighten out that arm a little bit more, here's my, here's my cylinder here. And here's the other part of the arm here. That elbow is always going to be, give me a pen, <clears throat> a working pen. That elbow is always going to be like right here. And then it's going to be the other part of the arm, and then it's going to be your delt. So just remember, it's going to be there. And if the more you straighten it, the, the more it's going to level out. But it's not going to get any higher than, I think, the bottom of your chest, maybe. So that just... It helps you to draw. And remember when you're drawing a cylinder, here's my cylinder. And I'm going to do a video on this, the, the breaking each body part down and turning them around so that you can start putting them, putting them together and do like my 360 book. You can take any position and turn it around to where you want it. So yeah, anyway, what was I saying? Cylinder here. And it depends on where you put your front circle 
determines on how much this thing is pointing at you, like this arm here, if this arm is pointing and this was a fist, right here, this is whatever kind of fist you want to put, put a fist with the gun in it, like that. The less of this you see, the more it's aiming at you, the more the circle goes into the back circle. Say that this is the back circle, this is my front circle, this cylinder is straight at me is looking or I'm looking straight down the, the hole in that cylinder so if I take the back circle and I move this front circle over to the side then it's going this way it's aiming that way so the more that I move this cylinder the front circle back circle over the more it's not aiming at me the more it's turned at me if I cut up my arm off and cut my arm if I cut my hand off and this was just a, a circle you could see Let's ignore that. You can see how much of this you see. The more I turn it, the less you see. You see the circle, which is my fist. The more away I see, the more away I turn it, the more of this you'll see. So I'm going to try to explain that deeper in um, a video, the video that I'm trying to do. I got to figure out how to explain it so you guys can understand it. So this is going to be the hand. Palm, palm. The hand is the hand is basically square. If you cut all my fingers off, you have a square. You turn it like this, and you do the action. It's not going to be so square. It's going to round off like this is flat. But if I do that, you see how the fingers go around. So whatever I do is going to kind of like round off a little bit. So you want to keep this round. You want to keep this. Uh, la, 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 la. Keep that round. Your palm. This is. Palm, when I say palm, palm, this is one fat side, this fat side, this is the small side. This connects right to the thumb, right? Let's see if I can get an angle. If I drew, drew one as it goes right to the thumb, depending on which, you know, hand you're drawing now. So this is going to be the fat side. So that's going to go to the thumb here, which is down. And then this part right here. Thumb is made of, what is it, three, two, three, two parts? This one, this one, and this is just connected to the, the fat part. This finger here is going to go straight up. It's not going to go out. And it's good if you draw your fingers. Usually this one comes out. This one definitely goes down. Just draw like the little nubs. It helps. Well, each one too big because this is, this is my plate right here and this is the side. So let's make that just a little smaller. And a lot of times I just do fingers, just, I mean, just do lines like that for fingers. And then you can do the little nubs. To start out with, you know, if you're doing, if you're doing your joints. And to show that it's bent, you do your underneath like that. I'll show you again. So if I curve it around like this, just halfway, the other one halfway, that kind of tells you that the fingers are bent. Take your pencil out. They are bent in by these little curved lines that go right across here. I don't take them all the way across. I just bend them just halfway up most of the way to show that it's being bent so when you draw slow your stuff gets tight Goodly enough. You could have the third bend in there, you know, if you want to get all professional about it. And I want to say thank you to all you people that are leaving comments. I'm getting less people leaving comments, but that's okay. You know, you still people watching. That's that's what counts. 
But for you people that leave comments, or you students that leave comments, thank you. What am I drawing? What am I doing? I don't know. What I'm doing is wrist. Okay, so again, we have this wrist here. It's going to come back here. Let's say the wrist is going to be, the actual wrist is going to be about right here, which is going to go back to about right here. Elbow is like right there. Because that cylinder is like this. You know, it's not, it's not really too facing, too facing me. Let me get my old examples here. It's not facing too much, but how do I have this picture? How do I have it? It's about, it's about in the camera. It would be about like, like that, I guess. And then you have the other part of the arm. So this one's like this in the camera, in the camera. This other one is coming back. It's hard to do when it's in the camera, coming back up toward the delt. So, yeah. But it is bent. Like that. Like he's like a, doing a, a blasting, blasting, blasting you. Circle straight down, and that's the almost the Loomis method. I couldn't really figure the loom, loom, Loomis, 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 Loomis method, Loomis, Loomis, because where does it does the nose always go downhill here? What if he tilts his head back? And that's the thing. I, he, to me, he didn't really explain that. I understand this part. You take the head, and then you, you know you do the the eye. But that ball actually rotates, so you'd have to show me every time it rotates where something goes, especially the nose. So it's it's kind of hard for me to do. Cause somebody asked me to teach head. Oh, I was doing the head, and they said use the the Loomis 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 method, and that is Proco Proco Pinko in his on his uh, on his channel. So. Bring this arm in a little bit more. Where's my chest? And I did say I was gonna shade this. So let's speed this up a little bit more. This is your rib. It comes straight up here from your thing. If you do this, this is where your ribs are gonna go. Your stomach. Because your where is it at the circle here? So below that circle is going to be your your oblique, and from that oblique from here to here, the oblique is going to be here. It comes right down into the crotch, and then I like to suck my um, stomach in right here to give them that um, what's it called the vacuum. Thing bodybuilders used to do that back in the 70s. Now they just flex. So bring that in a little bit more. So we have this here, so this, this, and then it curves out. This goes in, it curves in like this, this there. I don't want to get too much red in there because as I said, we're going to do some shading. Practice some shading. It's going to go behind the buttocks, right here. This knee, and I might want to walk away from this so that I don't, that it doesn't get too long. And my hand. I always do the thumb that gives me some kind of um, starting guideline of where everything else is going to go. And you know that when you, you're going to see that ridge, depending on how you turn your, <clears throat> there, your hand is turned, you're going to see some top. It's like a box. If you draw a box, you're going to see some of it. So if I do my, my thumb, 
then I will curve it like that and then I can show some top ridge then my palm my palm and then we are good to go almost so then you have your four squares staying in that little turn and they're coming in because this finger this finger comes see how this finger comes in at this angle so just remember that and then you can do your going up here and your knuckles So how do I have this? Okay, because it's going to end right here. And then your thumb, which comes out, which you won't really see from that angle. So this is what I have as far as drawing-wise. Ankle. Heel. Hand. Okay, so if I do this, I'm not going to see much muscle. On this. There's your palm. Wow. Am I lost? No, because it's going to be, it's going to be round like that. This is going to come, where's the chest? The chest is going to come up. And then it's going to go across here, and this is going to come there. Maybe it's this yellow paper that's just throwing me off. But because you don't have the collarbone in the right area. There you go. And that would go down if I'm not mistaken because that line, that, that's a muscle that goes from the from your to your thumb this ends in a point and it depends on how much of an angle or how built it is and that line this you can't see this this right here this it goes to your thumb it doesn't go straight down your arm it kind of curves around and goes right into your thumb i need to work out some more so i can get that ripped arm again so to help you to uh see it as I draw. So, doing the hand, you have these lines here. You have this, and I always have to look at, uh, when I do, I usually don't do a lot in hands, like your, your whatever line, whatever you call those lines. All right, so if I can get rid of some of these, extra lines which I doubt it where's my good eraser because I kind of just went crazy can add some shadow and just for the sake of it let's do a face so the eyes are going to be right there see I, I kind of I just kind of figure out where the eyes are going to be versus the, you know, the, the methods that others teach you. And that's why one eye is always crooked. Nose. That face don't look too hot. 
And I bought a, speaking of faces, I bought a head for my, my figure, my figure that I always use. I said I wasn't going to buy a head, but I bought a head just because I think it was $12. You know, those heads, sculpted heads that started out like 60 some dollars just for the, the head for the Fison figure, which is not Fison anymore. It's now whatever it is. So I saw some, I think it was from London, some guy from London was had a must have had an overstock or something but he, he sold a couple of them like if you wanted to buy the captain america head or the the um green arrow guy or the Schwarzenegger, that was that was still like between 30 and 50 dollars but this i bought this generic one i guess they had they had a couple hitler heads too it was you know which was what's with you in his face which was still expensive but they had a generic head for i want to say about 12 dollars 12.99 either 12.99 or 19 dollars so i bought one because because it was cheap and it wasn't bad and i can use it for reference if you can get stuff to use for reference make it happen so why i'm having trouble with this head sometimes you wake up and you just can't do it. But I have not didn't I didn't just wake up. There are steps to everything. Everything is a puzzle, even the face. Just put the pieces together, Brian. It goes down, it goes up, this chin goes here. This goes down. Where's the mouth? The mouth is right here. So the cheekbone would be right there. The mouth is there, cheekbone would be right there. And you give it a little more face and it comes out a little better. So this is gonna be round, this is gonna be round, rounded, rounded. Move that mouth over. I think that's what's killing me is the mouth is not moved over and he's making that crazy bad expression because my pencil is no longer sharp. So just move the mouth over and just give him a blank expression. This is going to be here. What is it? Something something I can't see that I'm not seeing. This is when you're supposed to walk away from it and then come back later. So I think it's the chin, something in the chin. Anyway, as I was saying, there are times when you cannot, you just like writer's block, a writer can flow with his writing and then the next day you just can't do it. And then same thing with artists. I mean, like it could happen in the middle of, of just drawing. And then you're like, wait a minute, something's wrong. I can't, I've just lost it. I can't draw anymore. When that happens, don't, don't force it. Someone, a professional artist told me, don't just walk away. Just don't, don't try to force it. It's there. It's not going anywhere. I mean, you own it and it's just, you know, it's just not coming out right now. Don't force it. It'll come back. It will come back. Anyway, are you, was I going to ink this? I don't think I'm inking this because I'm going to use blue. That gives it that 3D kind of thing. If I had 3D glasses, it probably would just look, as they would say back in the day, trippy. To work on my eye because every eye is not pointy like that but this is not a big issue that i'm just harping on right now the eyes the whole thing is about shading or trying to drop some shadow and and yeah shadow in this thing so my neck right here his ears make them look like an alien now because i made them too pointy all right, blue pencil, let's add some shadow, shading, shadow, shadow. And that's something I never really, I was, I would leave that to, to the colorist because I was just lazy putting shadow. Unless I was doing black and white, then I, I still did the minimal, minimal amount of shadow shading. Because I was never really happy with the way it came out for me. But you get to a point where you just have to do it. So let me throw this trashy little blue red pencil down and find my good one. Or was that the good one? I just got worn out oh so quickly. May have been. 
pull another one out just for the eraser. So, the papers and junk on my table. This is the only clean spot. If I focus, you know, you know, my laptop is here. I was watching some Deep Space Nine um, thing. I think they might be having a reunion or something soon. I don't know. I don't know. But I just paused that and I've got paper and pencils and other stuff all over the place. It's just, yeah, I just kind of focus right here. Uh, all right, let's do the shadow. Let's do the shadow. This is... Is this a color pencil or is this my blue pencil? Let me sharpen it. I always have a sharp pencil. 31 minutes into this and not one cut yet. So, all right. So, shadow. Shading, shadow, shading, shadow. Number one is going it, to, it, it depends where your light is at. It depends on where the light source is at. Is it the moon? Is it the sun? Is it your, your ceiling lights? Is it... um studio lights, is it a flashlight, is it a car light, you know, what time of day is it, that type of thing. The intensity of the light, is it, you know, the sun, is it a flashlight shining on them, is it strobe lights, whatever, those things like that, depending, determine um, how, mu how much shadow you're going to have, and also the direction where the light is coming from. If you're doing somebody in the back alley, oh, he's evil looking, yeah, he is. Uh, you don't have a lot of light unless you have like a car or something, you know, a truck or car. Don't put those frown lines uh, <laughs> shining his light on him. So basically, it's going to go the direction of the light and the intensity of the light. And then you start adding your shadow to it. Stop being a perfectionist, Brian. Stop it. Stop it. All right. Shadow. So... Let's just put the light coming this way, this way. So if you draw lines like that, it kind of gives you an in indication of where the light is going to be hitting. So the light is not right next to him, not on the side of him. It's going to be way, 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 way behind him. So basically most of the light is going to be on his back. This is going to be darkest because this is going to be furthest away from the light unless the light was here. Or you can have a double light, which means... This is going to be lit, anything around here, and then the other light. So this is going to be lit, but this is going to be dark in the middle. So you can have like kind of like a sandwich, and the meat is the darkness, and the two pieces of bread is the light. Yeah, I know you like that analogy. So we're just going to have kind of 1.1 light, a little teeny light down here. So remembering that most of the body is a cylinder. If you take the whole body, if you take all the pieces of the body, and you say, this is a cylinder, this is my cylinder right here. So when light hits, you're going to have, of course, you're going to have darkness here, but you also need a little bit of shadow right here to show that roundness that it is round. So everything can be a cylinder, even this, you know, round shadow here, a uh, um, little shadow here, more light, more shadow there if there is light, unless you have like strong, crazy, intense light. All right, let's 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 get going. So remembering that if you shade a ball, there you go again, back with the lessons. You have a ball and light is hitting here. It's going to be curved. So you have that shadow is going to be curved just the same way if it was whatever is going to be curved. The shadow has to be curved around it too. So yeah. Saying that because I'm doing this. The shadow is going to be here. So this is going to be curved right here. So we're going to have the shadow here. This is going to be curved. We're going to have this shadow here under his arm. This is going to be curved around. So I'm going to have the shadow here. And then maybe just fade it out. And the way I fade it out is just like what you saw me do. So like if this is my shadow here and I wanted to fade it out. I'll just do just a couple stroke lines like that to make it give it that fade out look. So light is here, so this arm is behind it, so this is going to be lit. So let's just say right here in the center because this is curved, but I don't want a strong shadow like right there. So here I would fade that out as well.
maybe here too. So this is this is curved like this. So I'm gonna put my shadow here. And definitely down here because that's a that's a big dip. And you have your collarbone, there's a dip in your collarbone, like right there. So on this neck, of course, you're gonna have shadow for the head. Let's just say I'm gonna put that shadow all the way over here. The back of the head is going to be lit. So under the eyes, you have to know the planes of your face. Where it's going to be lit. You have your cheekbone rides out. You have this little piece down here that is sucked in. So I could actually make this whole side just shadow. If, you know, I wanted to. Because this is farthest away from that light for the shape. Under the nose, you have your top lip catches the light, your bottom lip does not. This is gonna be curved because that pokes out as well. Since I did that, that's gonna be a little shadow. You're gonna have some shadow under this eye. And the thing is, it comes out, this is a deep, this is like one of the deepest parts and then it comes out. So your shadow would be deep here and it'll fade out there. This is your brow, so you're going to have shadow under that. Fade out because it's going close to the light. Uh, if you kind of give them that little scarl, snarl, you'll have a little shadow there. Um, of course, again, in here because it dips in. This is round right here, so you're going to get light here, and you're going to get a little shadow right here. Now, see, like Jim Lee, people like them could just do all these hatchings and make that stuff look good, make it stand out. Let me zoom in since the drawing part, so the, the body part drawing is done. Let's see if I can zoom in. You can see the shadow, and I'll just I'll just keep an eye on my uh, paper so that I can move it up and down a little bit more. Let's see if I can get a little more intensity on this light. I don't want too much to bleach it out. Uh, let's switch lights. That's not too shabby. All right, so again, shadow is going to be a little bit of shadow in here because remember that goes in. More shadow here. I'm going to give it a little stronger shadow on this side. So I'm going to darken a lot of this. Come around, it's going to curve because that's the side of the chest. It's the curvedness of the chest. And what I want to do is leave this part open so that you can differentiate the line from here to there. So actually, if I'm going to go dark, all this could be dark, maybe except for up here. I leave that so this is gonna be lit right here and let's just say right here because it's the highest point I can leave that line right there to differentiate differentiate this line from that line uh, curving around here And because that dips in right there, and I mean, yeah, you can do the, what do you call those? You can do the little feathering if you choose, but if you don't get it right, it just, it just looks bad to me. It just looks bad. So since this is really sucked in a lot, I can actually do the whole thing dark. So. Let's go back. Let's go up under here. <clears throat> this arm is up. All this should be could be black. All this could really just be in shadow. And if the light is coming from there, it 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 would be. I'm, it was is another word that I could use instead of just it would be. But I'm not going to. Let's just let's just do this. Take it all the way to the ribs, and the darkness between the ribs. So 
So this line right here in the stomach, that's gonna be shadowed here where those two um, muscles meet back under this, the chest, which is why I left this line right here. So this is round. So I'm just gonna do this and this and shadow this. Leaving a little darkness here, which I'm gonna carve that out. So there should be, since this side is dark, I'm gonna do this. And I'm, I'm thinking how to do this. I'm gonna do round like that, following that shape. And I'm gonna even take this one up like that. This is getting further away from the light, going down. So I'm gonna put a little more shadow here. And oh, what is the word I'm trying to say? It is, don't think what I'm doing is like, oh, this is, this is how you do it because you can do it any way you choose. This is just the ways you look at it, some way you look at it. And I'm, I'm trying to look at it with the shape by the shape by the shape. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to leave that rim light. I guess you call it a rim light. I, I'm going to find out the real word, the real word. So if it's like a light here and a light here, this, these parts would be lit just a little bit. So you don't have to shadow, put shade through the whole thing. So this is lit. So I'm going to go like this for this one, this for this one, but these do cut in. These are cut, these are cuts into the body. So it's going to dips, cuts into the body. So it's going to be shadow. Shadowed. And then I'm going to, since I have all this white here, I'm going to put a shadow right here for the peck. And then I said I was going to do that. I might have changed my mind. Yeah, I just changed my mind on that one. So let's just do like this. Even that's not the greatest, but I'm going to do it anyway. Now something like this, I would do like little lines, hatch lines. I'll just leave a little bit of shadow there. And because of that, I'm gonna to have to take some more shadow here, add a little more shadow there to kind of make it fill in. Usually you just, people will just shade all this in because there's nothing, no detail or anything like that. And it's curving around under the light. So let's just shade all this in. And I'll shade half of this in. Let's say I'll do um, something like this. Just I'm adding a shape to this. And then I can break it up like that, like a fade out kind of thing. And even do a little hatching right up under here. My pencil is not sharp anymore. So I'm just doing that shape. Let me sharpen my pencil. Now one thing about doing this, if you're drawing a whole comic, it's one thing if you're doing a pinup, but if you're doing a whole comic, you your brain has got to be, you got to do it a little faster. kind of without thought. So I'm going to just shade all this in as well. I'll leave that and leaving this little line for my rim light here. So this is going to be lit. This is going to be, where's that muscle at? It's going to come around like that. So, but I'm going to, there's so much you can do with this. I'm going to, all oh, that's going to be shadow right down here. And this could be black. So we're going to shade all this. As I said, there's no right and wrong because a professional, professional, AKA somebody that's been doing this for like 20, 30 years doing comics and so forth can say, oh my goodness, this guy's just wrong. So there's no right or wrong. It's like doing your character, what kind of powers you want. There's no right or wrong. 
So I can make this whole thing black or I can leave like a rim light here, which I'll do. I can leave one here, but it wouldn't be, but for the sake of the reader knowing where the line, where the two line, where the line meets for the legs, you would do that. And I think because this is so deep, I'm gonna just shadow this and have that rim line right here. And this. And right here, I'm just creating a shape for the foot, the shadow to fall on that foot. So from here, since I have this is white, I can take all this to black. And there's a word for that when you have black touching white and white touching black and then black touching white is there's a there's a, like a word for that and, and I don't think I don't know what it's called and for something like this you can do your lines to show that the, the hard light is is well the light is fading out same thing here I wouldn't really do it all the way maybe just a little shadow here because there's a dip in the leg here uh give it a little more of the definition with the muscle the line there i'll get to the hand later uh da, 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 da. so i could put a shadow for the leg but i would would have been smart to leave like that rim light right here which i kind of did so that you can tell and it's going to go around because the leg is round that's another thing when you're adding shadow, you gotta remember the shape that the shadow would go around. Then I'll put some right here for the calf and maybe right here for the front. And I think just little pieces here and I just, for some reason I would not do the foot. I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe because you have so much shadow here, you want white to shadow to light. Kind of balance, balance the thing. So go back to this arm. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. What kind of English is that? I'm going to make that and then maybe just small hatching of small feathering kind of thing right there, which doesn't really suit me. So. And then maybe just a little bit under the fingers. Uh, accentuate this palm. Doing a shape there. And then kind of a little fade out thing. And maybe all of this except for that very end leaving kind of like that rim line. Again here, since these are far further away, I can put a lot more shadow here. There, showing the cuts or the bends. The hand is kind of like goofed up. It's all right. get rid of some of this these pencils are last for a minute but these erasers I don't know what they just use like the cheap uh, eraser material it works I mean it, it erases but they just they just don't last long so this between the fingers and I'll just say darken this and they just come out to a light, uh, more of a, um, a hatch, kind of a shade. So um, under the bottom of that palm, leaving a little rim, and then this one too, leaving a little rim, and just, just barely on the thumb. 
So since this is an indentation, I'll kind of like fade that out. I could have faded that all the way here. And where's that little shadow dip in that arm right there? So let me pull back the camera because I think I am officially done with this one. No, I'm not going to ink it because I'm not like, you know, if I ink it, I'll try some stupid stuff and then I'll be mad like that. I mean, it could work, it, it, you know, it could work, but I know that I can erase it. And that's one thing about, you know, inking is so final, just like I'm playing around like this, just adding a little of this, a little of that. I will do that with a pen and then just, you know, just screw it up. I have more control with a pencil. That's why I'm a penciler, not more, of a, not so much of an inker. And one day I'll be able to afford an inker, somebody that can like mimic my style when they ink. That's the most important part because if you ink your own page, or if you give it to somebody to ink and they don't, they they do their own style and it doesn't match yours. That can really kind of screw you up. It just kills everything you have just done, you know, for that page. And this line goes here. I don't want you to think his waist is really, really tiny. So if this pencil had stayed sharp, I could do more crisper lines, but it's not staying sharp. And even his eye, his eye could be shadowed or blacked in to where it gives you that good shadow. And of course, the ear would be black. As I say, these little dips in the cheek would be. This is this is round right here, and it pops out. So you would get light here. You'd get shadow here, depending on how deep the cheekbones are. That goes down. Of course, shadow in the ear. And of course, because of the light, the shadow is going to come here, and his neck is going to get some shadow in it too because of the muscles in their veins. So pulling back just an inch. I don't knock my camera over. There you have your shadow drawing and shadowing tutorial. As I said, it depends on the light, the source, light source, how intense this, the light is and the direction the light is coming from. Figure those three or four out, then do it in pencil first. Do it in, in color pencil would be great. Uh, and then before you ink, that way you can say, no, I don't like that. Take it away, get it done, go eat something. Like right now, if I was going to ink this, I would go get something to eat or snack on, come back in an hour, 30 minutes, whatever. Then I could take a look at it and say, okay, I like this, I like that, I don't like this, I don't like that. And I can erase it versus being in such a rush to ink this picture and put it up on um, Facebook or what is that, uh, Twitter or whatever. And then the next day I look at it, I'm like, oh my goodness, that, that, you know, that just looks bad. So yeah, words of wisdom. Stop playing with this, Brian, just in the video. So, all right, I'm gonna get my school bell. I've just been lazy to look for the sound effects of a school bell ringing and I'm gonna get it and that's gonna tell me when it's over. And when it's over, it's over. So that's it for this uh, video. Hopefully it'll come out better in uh, editing. It's nice. This yellow, blue, and red is kind of nice together. Anyway, see, I'm rambling. See you guys in the next video.